So, Gaynor, where are we? I and we are going to find out all about Ron. And it's not doing great. You want to do that again? Sorry. Check two. Go. We are going to find out about Ron. And guess what? It's gluten free. I can drink it. intriguing features of being in the crow's nest is it has these things with um, pointing out directions to various places in the world. So where do you fancy going Bev? Don't know, I haven't got the foggiest clue. We are going to find out about rum and guess what? It's gluten free! I can drink it! Very oh look at this. Come on then. Are you sure we're meant to be down here? She said go down into the vaults. Oh it'd be nice to have some light. Oh proper vaults, aren't they? These are proper old vaults. I have to say it's the most unusual museum tour I've been on in some time. Well, the fact that it's pitch black. black. <laughs> And you've got to bring your own light. <laughs> oh yeah. There's the walls. Woo. One thing that quickly became apparent was that the rum industry was built on the back of slaves. To its credit, the rum story exhibits did not shy away from this. Yes, indeed. This is, um, represents the inside of a slave ship and shows you the sort of conditions people were transported in. And if it ever took anything to convince you that slavery is not a uh, complete matter wrong, a visit to the rum story might not be a bad place to start. This is an actual document from a slave plantation. I mean, these are the names of actual people. You were sold by cargo. After the Battle of Trafalgar, Horatio Nelson was famous for being embalmed in a cask of navy rum so they could bring his body back. I don't know if it was a cask of Jefferson's Whitehaven rum or not. Am I going to get some night hours now, Bev? So then, Gaynor. Yeah, I'm going to get some night hours, aren't I? Where are, where are we and what are we about to do? Well, we're in Whitehaven. And we're actually contemplating doing the entire journey all the way to Liverpool because the weather is such that we basically go for it now or we ain't going anywhere for a week. Yeah, so basically we've got one day yeah. of, of moderate weather yeah. to do a 12 or 15 hour passage. Yeah, we'd got a we had got a plan that we were going to sort of like stop off at Peel Island and things like that and do some other stuff. It just ain't going to happen. You've got to go with the weather. And and that's the way it works around here. 
Yep. The weather dictates everything. And it's one o'clock in the morning at the minute, roughly. Yeah. And we've got to prep a boat in the dark at one in the morning. Yep. We've got to go out through a sea lock. Yep. We've got to get round a contrary head. Yep. And then we've got to go south for about 60 miles. Mm, give or take. And, yeah. and avoid gas fields and lobster pots. Yeah, just in case. As I say, I know we've got some night hours, Bev, under our belt, but my God, do we have to go for so many? Well, you're not going to get that many night hours. Sunri no, sunrise. Sunrise in four five. hours. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's not that many, but it's, it feels like we're going to get loads. Yep. So at least we don't have to do the whole passage in the dark. No, nope. get to see my favourite time of the day. Dawn. Sunrise. Sunrise, I love the dawn. I don't know if you can hear that, but that is the sound of our propeller going round while um, we're under sail. This is why some people put a um, generator on their propeller so that when they are physically sailing, they're at least making electricity. But you can just hear it. And it's going round quite a bit, to be honest. <sighs> Bev has just put the uh, engine in reverse. And it has stopped. So, if um, that's a little trick, if you want it to uh, stop, just put it in reverse. <sighs> this morning, Bev and I left uh, Whitehaven. At the crack of dawn is all I can say for it. Nope, it was actually pre-crack, let's be honest. Anyway, we left because um, it was the only weather window we had. And uh, we had to leave um, Whitehaven into quite choppy seas. Um, it was that bad that Bev had to tack with the engine on because we needed to go south but we had to go with the with the way the waves were going and it was just ridiculous um, but um, we was we both of us were really really scared because what if the weather predictions were wrong what if the day had not calmed down and we'd been out there for hours. You know, we had to go out in ba in conditions that were a bit worse than we wanted. Because um, as we went south and as we go south, 
the weather conditions calm. Now, luckily, the weather forecast has actually gone with um, truth. But honest to goodness, that doesn't stop you having EBGBs. And um, as for a stress-free lifestyle, this is not it. I have had my stress levels through the roof this morning. Luckily, we're now on a calmer patch and we're okay. I decided to call this passage a rum journey. I have had Gale Force 8 and we've been on a mooring and talk about rock and roll, very, very unpleasant. But hopefully the lock is now open and we're going to be able to go in. I'm really looking to be being home. Yeah, we both. <laughs> 